I, I, I just said something. I just said something. Uh, uh, yes, it's true. It's true that God had a great plan for David's life. But before the plan could come to fruition, there were some things that David had to endure. David had to deal with some issues. And I believe tonight there's someone here who's right now parked between the promise and the provision. And uh, you, you are dealing with certain problems in your life. But I don't want you to give up because of those problems. I, I need you to understand that God will permit problems for the purpose of preparing us for what he has in store for us. Oh yes, oh yes. God, God will allow certain things to happen to uh, prepare us for what he has planned for us. And so, so tonight, tonight, as we look at 1 Samuel chapter 30, I, I want you to understand that this is a part of the process that God uses to prepare David for what's in store. Uh, David, 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 and the men who were with him. And please don't forget, at this point, David is a fugitive. King Saul is out to kill him. And so David is a fugitive, but there are several people with him. They had made their camp in a place called Ziklag. And there was David and these men and their families. They were all a part of this land. And the scripture reveals that one day David and the men went out to try to help fight a battle and while they were gone the enemy came and they decided to take their family members captive. Oh, oh, listen, listen. Have, 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 you, have you been there when you were out trying to help somebody else and ended up being victimized yourself? Well, as they head toward home, as they go back toward Ziklag, they notice smoke coming from the area because the enemy had come through and destroyed their city. And the scripture reveals that the men who were with David were grieving, they were hurting so that they actually thought about stoning David. Now, I find that interesting, my brothers and sisters. David is also a victim. David is also grieving. He is also hurting, but the people wanted to turn on him. But check out what David does. The scripture says that David in encouraged himself in the Lord. That's where I want to start tonight. I want to start there. I want, I want us to understand that God desires for us to be encouraged as saints. So let's start with the encouraged saint. Isn't it interesting that it does not tell us how David encouraged himself in the Lord. It just tells us that David encouraged himself in the Lord. The guys were thinking about stoning him, but he encouraged himself yeah, yeah, yeah. in the Lord. How in the world can a saint encourage himself? How can a saint encourage herself in the Lord. Well, I believe, I believe if we look at David's life, there are several things we can pull up to teach us how we can encourage ourselves in the Lord. Listen, you can encourage yourself in the Lord when you rely on the spirit of the Lord that resides in you. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. See, it's the reliable spirit spirit that helps us uh, to be encouraged in the midst of discouraging situations. Remember I told you over in 1 Samuel chapter 16 when he was anointed the spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day forward and check this out my brothers and sisters how many of you know when you have the spirit of the Lord upon you that there comes a point when you can be in encouraged in the midst of disappointing situations. Wait a minute, preacher. I, I don't understand that. Well, let me see if I can help you. The Spirit of God, the paracletos, the one who comes alongside, the companion and the comforter comes for the purpose of giving us a boost when we are dealing with some down time. God, God will allow 
allow his spirit to help us when we cannot help ourselves. God will allow his comforting power to take over. Oh, let me, let me say it another way so you can get it. See, when you are filled with the spirit, you will be drilled by the spirit and you can't help but to be thrilled in the spirit. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. See, when the spirit of God is in your life, he will help you. Watch this, watch this. When the spirit takes control of your life, you will witness some painful moments, but he has a way of causing us to be comfortable in uncomfortable situations. Uh, 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 Pastor Nettles, Pastor Nettles, you remember, you remember the house where I was raised there in Camden, Arkansas, and, and you remember those high cement steps that led to our front door. Well, one day my uncle, my uncle James, was over at the house. Now, Uncle James would uh, drink intoxicating drink. Okay, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, he, he, he would go ahead and put down some liquor. He would drink it. And I, I remember one day Uncle James was leaving our house. He was getting ready to step out the door. And we have these high cement steps. He stepped, he took one giant step and he missed all of them and fell flat on his face. And I ran out to help Uncle James, but Uncle James jumped up and said, baby, I'm alright. And I said, how in the world could he be alright? Because I had fallen in times past and I hurt myself but Uncle James said he was alright but then it dawned on me the reason he was alright is because of what he was full of and how many of you know when you're full of the Holy Ghost that's like being intoxicated that's like having something in you to help you to deal with painful situations yeah, yeah, so I believe he encouraged himself because of that reliable power. But not only did he encourage himself because of the reliable power, I believe he encouraged himself by taking out time to remember the past. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, the remembered past ought to cause you to get encouraged. Uh, uh, let, me, let me see if I can say it another way. This is not the first time you've gone through something. This is not the first time you've had to deal with some issues. This is not the first time you've had problems. But check this out. God took care of you back then. But I'm getting ready to bless somebody. Don't you know he's the same today as he was yesterday? And he's going to be the same forevermore. If he did it before, how many of you know he can do it again? He's the same God. And every now and then you ought to just think back and look at what God's brought you from. Think about how God made a way when there appeared to be no way. Just take our time to look at the past. Remember, 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 remember the past. So you have that reliable power that can cause you to be encouraged and then the remembered past but then but then I think also the reviewed promises see uh, every now and then you need you need to just take out time to look in this book see every now and then you need to open the book and see what he promised and see his word is designed to help us to deal with situations that are tough if we would go ahead and stand on the promises of the Lord no matter what comes our way we will be able to hold our heads up high oh I know I know you don't understand how this works but let me see if I can say it another way see when it comes to the word the word becomes a solid foundation for the believer. And when you are standing on that solid foundation, you're going to have to go through some things, but because you are standing on something solid, you won't stray from the position that you are in. Uh, when, I, when I was growing up, when I was growing up in Camden, I used to love to go fishing there on the Washington River. Washita River and there were times when the Washita River would get high and it would create these little swampy areas and one day I went down to the river after it had rained and, and, and I noticed the water was up and there were these little swampy areas created but I noticed something interesting that was a lily 
that stood up in the midst of one of those swampy areas. Now, the reason it was interesting was because I had seen other lilies that had been uprooted and they were flowing downstream. But this one lily continued to stand while the others had been uprooted and flowing downstream. And I wanted to know how could this one lily stand when the others had been uprooted and were flowing downstream. So I decided to go up under that lily and pull it up. This is what I discovered. The reason it was able to stand wrapped around the roots of the lily was a rock. Because it was wrapped around a rock. Now watch this. The lily would sway back and forth but it would never stray from its position because it was on something solid. How many of you know on Christ the solid rock? See when you have that solid foundation, you'll be able to stand in the midst of whatever is going on. And we, we, have to, we have to take our time to review his promises. And when we review his promises, we'll be able to encourage ourselves in the Lord. Which I, I hear what you're saying. And I try I tried my best to do that, but I, you know, there are times when I can't get encouraged. I can't get encouraged. I know you that you said that power is reliable, and I don't understand uh, why I can't be encouraged. Well, let me say one more thing about that reliable power, and I'll move on. See, it's important to note that if you are a believer, you have the power, but uh, your power cannot function as it was intended if certain things are going on. All right. This is my last night from flowing. Uh, 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 uh. If, if you are not living according to the principles in His Word, I uh, left Camden, Arkansas in 1979 to go to Bishop College driving a 76 Ford Pinto. So it was yellow. Yeah. Yeah, it was yellow. And so one day, one day while at Bishop College there in Dallas, Texas, I, I, I was there and I went to get in my car and it wouldn't start. And so I needed to get me a new battery, new battery. So got somebody to boost me off. I went to the auto supply store, purchased a new battery, didn't have much money. I took all of my money to purchase that new battery, put it in the car. And guess what? The car still wouldn't stop. I was mad. I, I said, come out here, get this battery, give me my money back. And they said, no problem, sir, we'll do it. So they come out. They're getting ready to take the battery out. They said, sir, uh, uh, the problem is not the battery. And they showed me my cables. They said, there's so much corrosion on your cables that the power can't flow through. Oh, good God. See, see, uh, to clean off the corrosion in order for the power to flow through. See, that may be the problem. If you have a lot of corrosion in you, you need to clean that off. You need to stop doing some stuff. You need to leave some folk alone. You need to get out of some situations and the power will flow through. Yeah. So I believe that's how, that's how you can encourage yourself in the Lord. And so we have we have the encouraged saint who spends time when you study the text praying. Now check this out. When you look at the recorded prayer in the text, it's interesting to see what David is doing. The scripture says after he encouraged himself, he went to the priest and asked for the ephah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now uh he goes to the priest not to submit a prayer request, but he asked for the part of the garment used by the priest whenever the priest would petition on the behalf of everyone else. But check out what David does. David says, I don't need you to pray for me this time. David says, I want to pray myself. Oh. Oh, oh, listen, 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 listen. See, when, 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 you, when you've been encouraged in the law, you, you want to talk to it on your own. And I, I like that because, see, too many of us haven't figured this thing out yet. See, too many of us wait to come to church. 
uh, we, we want to be encouraged by things connected to the church. We want to be encouraged by the congregant or the choir or the clergy. But see, I discovered something a long time ago. There are times when I'm discouraged or disappointed and the church is not in session. It's not on a Sunday. It's not doing midweek service. And I need to spend some time with God. Now check this out. I discovered something else a long time ago. I don't have to go to you to pray for me. It's good for us to pray for one another. But I discovered this. I can pray for myself. You know what else I've discovered? I don't need to go to the pastor to have him lay his hands. I can lay hands on myself because of who I'm connected to. So David, 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 he prays himself. He said, Lord, should I pursue? And if I pursue them well, I overtake, will I recover? The God said, pursue. And you check this out. You are going to overtake them and recover all. Oh. Now, you can't help but to be encouraged. Receiving a word like that from the Lord. But let me move from the encouraged saint and talk about the expected struggle. Because you do know there are going to be some things that happen after you've become encouraged. So the scripture says that uh, they all leave headed to, you know, go ahead and pursue the enemy. They get to a certain point, a place called Besaw, mm -hmm. and uh, two of two hundred of the men became faint. Uh, yeah, yeah. They could not continue. Uh -huh. Look at what's happened after you've been encouraged. The moment you encourage you, you encouraged in the Lord. Uh -huh. You had to go and do what God told you to do, uh -huh. and you run smack dab into a problem. But the number of folk you had with you at the beginning yeah. are no longer with you. Oh, you. Have you been there when your support system has changed? Yeah. But I believe when you look at the divided men in the text, it suggests something about the way God functions. See, I, I discovered that God will reduce the number because God does not want you to take the credit once the victory, come on, hear me somebody. God, God says, I, I need to make sure you are not focused on your men or your church or your group getting it done. I want to show you what I can do with just a few. I want to show you what I can do even though you don't have a crowd with you. God says, I want to get the glory after this is said and done. I don't want you sticking your chest out and holding your head up like you did it. So sometimes God will reduce the number. So you have the, you have the uh, divided men. God says you, you have too many. So I, I need to reduce the number because when it's said and done, I want you all to look at me and say, God did it. So, so, so you, you, you have the divided men. So now you just have a 400 who are headed uh, to find the enemy. But while they are on the way, they run into a guy yeah, yeah. who is dying. He's been left to die. And David takes out time to help this brother. Yes, sir. Yeah. What are you to do when? The mission is delayed because you stop on the path to help somebody. I, I could imagine these guys with David were ticked off. Man, we don't have time to help them. We don't have time to do anything. But be careful when you pass an opportunity to minister. Uh, because you don't, you do know that uh, sometimes there are some angels on the path and you don't know that. So, so, so here David stops to help this brother. I know 
it delayed the mission. I, but see, every now and then, this is what I've discovered about God. I know you're in a hurry to land. I know you're in a hurry to get there. But every now and then, what God will do, God will place you in what is called a holding pattern. Oh, yeah. uh, I know you're in a hurry, but God said, no, it's not time to land yet. And listen, I've discovered something about God. Since he is my pilot, he knows what's best for me. And if he says, we need to hold up for a while, I know you see land. I know you see it. Every God said, no, I need you to understand that I'm running this. And every now and then, God sets up a holding pattern because he can see a whole lot further than we can. So the mission is delayed because they helped this dying man, this man who was left to die. Uh, so here they are, watch this. They minister to this man, they give him food and drink. They, they nurse him back to health. Then they find out who he is. Please note that order. They, 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 they just knew somebody was hurting and need some help. They didn't ask. The person, listen, are you a member of Gospel Temple? Are you a member of First Baptist? You know, no, 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 no. Uh, just decided to help because there was a need. And listen, you need to, you need to realize every now and then God will set up something so you can minister. But really, God is getting ready to do something to minister to you. Because this man they helped was the man connected to the enemy that had come to Ziklag and stolen everything from David and the men. And they didn't even realize it. One of my, one of my sons in the ministry. The Antioch Church in Dallas, he was unemployed for a couple of years. And, 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 and Daryl, Daryl is a very intelligent brother. He, you know, been working in corporate America for a long time. But because of what was going on with the economy and people were not hiring, he had sent out hundreds of resumes. And uh, no one was hiring. But finally he receives a call to report to this company to have an interview. And this was going to be interview number three at this company. So he's excited. And so he decides to leave early, headed to the place where he's to uh, go ahead and be interviewed. But on his way on Interstate 30 there in Dallas, there was a man who had a flat. And uh, it was during the peak of, you know, the time when traffic is moving. And, and this man was having a problem changing his flat because he was having to look behind him and watch the cars. So Daryl decided that he would park his car and he would steer traffic around so that they would not run into this man. And so this man was able to go ahead and change his tire. And so he looks back at Daryl and he waves at him and says, thank you, gets in his car and he leaves. Daryl gets in his car and he's running a few minutes late for his interview. But Daryl Darryl wanted to help that guy, so he was just late and he explained to the receptionist what happened. And, and, and so he says what happened and the guy, uh, the, the receptionist says, okay, you can still go in. Uh, he's waiting on you. As soon as Daryl stepped in, guess who the man was? the one that he helped to change his flat and the man, the man went ahead and hired him on the spot and I stopped by to tell you you don't know what will happen when you take out time to help somebody along the way. This man ended up being a blessing to David because David had this man well, to say yeah, he is. yeah. Well, well they make it, they make it I'm getting ready to wrap it up now, I'm getting ready to wrap it up I know no, 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 no. What, what happens? What happens in the text? You have, you have the encouraged saint. You need to expect trouble. But I want to close and talk about the extra stuff that God's going to give you. Uh, uh, the scripture says they arrived. Now, when they arrived, guess what the enemy was doing? They were partying. They were dancing and drinking. Which meant they didn't have their weapon. 
They had placed those to the side and they were getting their dance moves on. They were getting their drink on. Now, I, 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 uh, let me go back to what I told you a few minutes ago about the holding pattern. Yeah. See, they arrived, but it was the perfect time to arrive. And let me say something about the perfect timing. See, when it comes to God placing us on hold for a season, he knows exactly what time we need to arrive. See, if we get in a hurry, we get there when they are having their basic training. They have all of their gear, all of their weaponry. But when you wait on God and do what God wants you to do, God will have you show up at the right time. You don't want to get there too soon. You don't want to get there too late. You want to get there in time so God can move. And listen, listen, I need you to understand that God knows the perfect time. Perfect time. My, my, my middle son, my middle son, he was the quarterback for the uh, high school Trinity Tigers. The high school there in Cedar Hill, Texas. And uh, I need you to picture my son just for a moment. He's my height. But he was the quarterback. Now, uh, some of you all may not get that. But in most cases, quarterbacks need to be tall. Okay, but he was my height. He was my height. And, you know, he wasn't the height of a, a Pastor Nicholas Nettles. No, he was my height. He, he was my height. And, 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 and he, he was the star quarterback for the Trinity Tigers. Now, I went to the game. Now, his stats were off the chart when it came to completed passes. Now, I admit, I didn't understand how he could throw that ball and the receivers would catch the ball. And, and, and the reason I didn't understand it is because most of the linemen were taller than Carl and he couldn't see over them, but he was completing all of these passes. So one day I said, son, how in the world can you see the receiver and cause them to catch? He said, no, daddy, that's not the way I do it. He said, daddy, I do what is called a timed pass. See, a timed pass is all you have to do is release the ball, go in a certain area where the receiver is supposed to be, and then you can complete. I don't see the receiver. I just know I'm supposed to throw the ball in that direction. How many of you know that God is the same way? Every now and then there's a time pass. You don't want to get there too soon. You won't get the ball. But you got to make it just in time to receive what God has in store. Yeah, so we get there. And it's perfect timing. It's perfect timing. And they are able to go ahead and take care of the enemy. Take care of the enemy. But check out, check out the prize taken. The prize taken. The scripture says they recovered all. They recovered all. Now you look at that and you say, okay, they got everything they lost. No, that's not what it says. It says they recovered all. It means that everything the enemy had taken, not just from them, but from every other group, uh, they were able to regain it. They were able to receive it. And I need you to understand, when you are operating in the perfect will of God, God will give you more than you expect. Oh, hear me somebody. God says, I'm going to add something. I'm going to give you some extra. I'm going to allow you to receive more. We're going to see more and see. Uh, I didn't have an illustration for this one until today. Until today, uh, 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 Pastor Nettles, I, I went to uh, uh, Wendy's on University. That's what I'm saying, right? On University. On university. And so I pull up and I place my order. My order at Wendy's. And so they tell me to pull up. I'm saying, wait a minute, this is a fast food restaurant. But they, after I place my order and get to the window, I pay for the meal. And that's another thing they get you on. You pay for it. And then it's not ready. They ask you to pull up. And so I pull up and I'm looking out my rearview mirror. And there are other cars that had to pull up. And they're bringing out uh, the different bags. And I look at my, I'm about hot now. And I look at my rearview mirror and I see this girl coming out. But I know it's not my order because she has this, uh, I think they call it a biggie drink and all of that. And, and so she's moving in my direction and then she gets to my window and she reaches to it. I said, I didn't order that. I ordered a small. She said, no, you don't understand because you had to wait. 
we decided to supersize. Oh, hear me somebody. How many of you know if you learn how to wait on the Lord, He will supersize and He will get you more. Yeah. So he, he was able to go ahead and recover all. Well, I'm closing. I'm closing now, but I need to when you read the chapter, I need you to go toward the end because the scripture reveals the scripture reveals when they went back. Remember those 200 that were down by Esau and Esau who became faint? Uh, the 400 didn't want to shake. Said they don't they don't deserve and listen you need to understand because people are not where they're supposed to be spiritually they will start pouting and so uh, you have the 400 that I call the pouting troops they didn't want to share they didn't want to go ahead and give anything over to the 200 that didn't do anything but listen David has to get them straight David has to say now wait a minute how dare you want to overlook them because you need to understand the only reason we have what we have is because God was willing to show us mercy it's because of mercy that we receive it if it wasn't for God's grace and his mercy we wouldn't have what we have and I, I think that's a good place to wrap this thing up because you need to understand the only reason God will encourage you and give you extra is because of his grace and his mercy. A few years ago, I was visiting my sister who's uh, going to be with the Lord now. She lived in Detroit and this was, I wanted to surprise her so I called her daughter Angela and said, I want to come up and see Annie so I'm going to fly up and I'm going to rent a car but I need some directions as to how to get to her house house on West Outer Drive and so Angie started telling me on the phone and I was writing down the directions. She, she said now what you gonna do Uncle Kerry what you gonna do you're going to take this exit and you're gonna make this turn and when you make this turn you're going to see a hospital you are to turn right at that hospital and Uncle Kerry you need to keep on going and mom is located about five blocks up the road and then she said if you come to another hospital that means you've gone too far but then it dawned on me when I asked my niece about the names of the hospital she said the first one is called Grace Hospital and the other one is called Mercy Hospital and I thought about it y'all my sister lived between Grace and Mercy and how many of you know that we too live between Grace and mercy and we can know that it's all because of his grace we can know that it's all because of his mercy you want to share you want to be a blessing to somebody else because you understand if it had not been for the Lord on your side you wouldn't have what you have and so I close tonight David understood that all he had to do was put his trust in the Lord after he encouraged himself he decided to put his faith in the almighty God he decided to go ahead and depend on to see him through. And I'm getting ready to leave your gospel temple, but I need you to understand if you have faith in him, God will take care of you between the promise and the provision. But you've got to have faith. Now somebody said, what kind of faith? You need that radical faith in order to survive between the promise and the provision. What is radical faith? Well, let me call this old lady to help me define radical faith. There was this grandmother that was sitting in a rocking chair and her grandkids came and said, Grandma, tell us what faith is. Grandma said, well, faith is if God told me to get out of this rocking chair, to go out that door right there, I'd get out of this rocking chair and go out the door. And the grandkids said, wait a minute, Grandma, tell us really 
what faith is. Grandma said, well, faith is if God told me to get out of this rocking chair, to go out that door over there, I'll get up and go out that door. And about that time, the grandkids became disturbed. They gave Grandma glasses, put the glasses on Grandma, and said, Grandma, tell us what faith is. She said, I told you, but I'll tell you again. If God told me to get out of this rocking chair, to go out that door over there, I'll get up and go out that door. They said, Grandma, the reason we gave you the glasses, we wanted you to see that there's not a door over there. She said you wanted to know what faith is. God can put a door where there isn't a door. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody? 